Hey guys, so it looks like we are live. Um, just do a quick test if I get some people just to put anything in the chat box on probably on the right side of your screen, I think a bit of you just so you can hear me and see me all fine, that would be great. Perfect, looks like we're fine then. So, yeah, first up, welcome to the webinar. So I've been wanting to put this together for ages, um, but kind of just thought that now is about the right time. I think I've probably got enough, not only to be able to do it myself, but to share that as well. Awesome, loads of people saying they can hear and see all fine, so that is good. Um, I'm not the best with technology, so that's actually a massive relief. Um, I'm really excited to get started as well. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm gonna kind of start properly in a second, but this is just like a thanks for giving up your Wednesday evening or wherever it is time-wise in the world. Um, I know I got a message from Jimmy earlier saying he's getting up at 4.45 his time to watch it, so that is dedication. But yeah, thanks for giving up your evening. Hopefully you'll get a lot from it. Um, well, I know you'll get a lot from it. So what we've got is I've put together a slide presentation. That's gonna be on the screen most of the time, and I'll also obviously be talking through it, I'll occasionally take the slide presentation down to check for any questions. Um, so yeah, there's probably some controls on your screen, have a play around with them. There's like a chat section, a Q&A, polls, I'll kind of drift in and out of those, looking at them as we get to them. So what I'm gonna do is bring up the presentation. We'll get started again. I just like to test things just to make sure they're working. So what I do is I bring the presentation up, do my screen share, then if you guys just Give me a, I'll bring it down. If you give me a quick yes, that you can see it, that'd be great. So test it quickly. And if you say whether that worked or not. Well, it seems to be there on mine anyway, so I think we shall go for it. Um, so yeah, let me just give me, cool, all good, perfect. Right, so I'll get it up properly for you guys. And we'll get going. So clear, that's the end slide, we won't start there. So title of the webinar, as you well know, is how personal trainers can make 300, 600 pounds extra per month. So welcome, pretty much. As I said briefly, and to anyone who missed the very start of this recording, Basically, the idea of this is for me to put into, well, for me to kind of teach what I've managed to do the last couple of years in terms of gradually going from like full time personal training to now pretty much getting all my living from writing um, and some online coaching as well. Now, through the webinar, we'll probably run like 45, 50, 55 ish minutes. And the aim of that is to deliver loads and loads and loads of value, um, and not just value, but stuff that you can actually take away and apply and use yourself as well. Like I said, you know, 300 to 600 pounds a month, a few simple strategies in here can do that. It is realistic, it's certainly achievable for any personal trainer who knows their stuff with training and diet and whatever. Um, and so hopefully these tips will help you put that into practice and make money from writing. Now, at the end of the webinar, as I said, I'm gonna provide as much value and content as I can. Um, there's five minutes where I'm gonna talk about something slightly different. Um, if you've got to the end of the webinar and feel like it's given you something you can go and do, helped you with your career, helped you boost your income, or you just think it's been of value to you, then I'd really appreciate kind of five minutes of your time because I've got something that I think will be of interest to a lot of you. So that's just a bit of like an open loop to get started. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get going. So what to expect from writing? Now at the very least, it can be amazing exposure for your business and the chance to be seen as an authority figure. Now writing, whether that's on your own blog, whether it's for other people which we'll talk about, whether it's being featured on sites and in magazines and stuff, is a really cool way to get you seen as like an expert basically. So just from doing that, people get to see your names and kind of learn your name as well. So that's more or less the worst that's gonna happen by you getting really good at writing. And at best, it can turn into a very well-paid career. So later in the webinar, we're going to touch on copywriting, which can pay phenomenally well, in all honesty. So 
that's something that I'm going to go into a bit and give you a hand getting started with that. In terms of what to expect from this webinar, I wanted to go through a lot, really. So we have, well, we're going to talk about content generation ideas. So if you struggle for getting ideas for blogs, getting ideas for articles, emails, anything like that, got some really simple ways you can make generating ideas really, really easy. We'll touch on how to be interesting and engaging, because a lot of the time people think it's just about the theoretical stuff that you get down on paper. And actually, for most of us out there, in terms of who wants hit with our writing and our blogs and whatever, it's much more important to be interesting and engaging and to write in a manner that makes people want to read more. We'll discuss how not to repeat yourself, because that's actually pretty different. Um, one of the questions I get a lot from people who want to get into writing is, how do I say something new? It's all been said before. Really, really, really common, and I completely understand why people feel like that. Um, but again, we're gonna go through some ways where that's not an issue at all. We'll talk about the best places that you that will pay you to write, easy ways that you can um, with writing in different manners, and also how to put together and sell ebooks, because that's obviously something huge that a lot of people want to get into. It's really beneficial. Passive income is really, really appealing because you can earn without working, so to speak. So I know that there was a lot of demand for that. So we'll run through that in fairly detailed manner to be honest and again have some stuff that you can go away and do almost right away um, to start. So the basic sections we've got are how to get started as a content writer, we'll go through how to get started as a copywriter, what to do to increase the views, shares and traffic to your site, tips for guest blogging and quick tips for starting and engaging an email list with words. And ultimately, how to turn writing from a hobby, or even a chore, because a lot of people don't like it, into a sustainable means of extra income. Uh, I thought I'd open up the floor just for a few questions, if we have any to begin with. Um, no, it looks so like all good, so I'll pretty much just crack on with section number one then. Also want to talk about why I'm running this actually. So I think storytelling is quite good, that's, or storytelling is great at Actually, that's something I'm going to touch on a lot in this webinar too. So my own personal story, a lot of you may know this already, but I like to run through it anyway. So I was a personal trainer from 2009 to 2013. I was working full time and like a lot of you, I felt burned out. You know, I was doing really well. I was doing kind of 40 to 50 sessions a week, but it was the typical seven day weeks up at five on weekdays and like six on weekends working through to 9, 10 o'clock at night, um, start to not like it, start to find that I'd reached my income ceiling and couldn't do any more. So I then started online coaching and writing was the main way I picked up clients. So while I was doing that, transitioning from one-on-one -on -one PT to online, I kept writing on the sides just to boost my income um, because I enjoyed it. So I wrote for sites like Livestrong, I guest blogged, I did some ghost writing as you read about here, I picked up some freelance gigs, and I realized that writing for others actually paid pretty well, and if you could write, you could also earn passive income. So I started releasing products and built an email list. That led on to kind of two years ago, about 2014, I pretty much fell into copywriting thanks to Dan Meredith, who a lot of you will know, and actually, if the technology works all right, we're going to try and have him on in a few minutes to talk about something, actually. So, fingers crossed that works. If not, I've got his notes here so I can go through them and let you know what he was going to tell himself. So, with Dan, I started working on projects for some quite big names in the fitness industry and also in the supplement market. Um, <clears throat> kept learning by doing that basically, and I have mentoring from people that again some of you may have heard of, um, famous copywriters and marketers like Darren Hanser, like Doberman Dan and John McIntyre. We stepped up work in the fitness and health space and I began writing copy, writing articles and blogs for other industries as well, such as online marketing, real estate, home security and even medical marijuana actually, that was a really weird one. Um, something I'm very proud of actually recently, I've just picked up the gig for head writer for Avatar Nutrition. So somehow managed to do it all. That's been writing 
as like extra income on the side, writing to pick up clients myself. That's my main form of, of getting online work. And also being paid for writing with copy and writers for different sites and, and different people and whatnot. So hopefully by putting all of that into this presentation, I can help you do kind of the same, really. <clears throat> all in all, I realized how fun and how profitable writing could be and offers much more freedom than personal training or even online coaching. So whether you want to be learn to be a full-time writer, use words to make a little extra money on the side, or you love coaching and know you need to get better at selling your services, then you are in the right place by learning about writing. So here's why I write. It's fun. It allows you to spread your message. You reach a different audience. Like I said, it can be used as a way to top up your income or create another revenue stream in your business. And it provides security when you're away from home, when clients are injured, or if you work online and have a short-term slump. Other final bit I wanted to talk about was why 300, 600 pounds a month, um, which I suppose is what, 450 to about 900 dollars. Um, basically, that is a 100% realistic target. Writing can potentially be really, really lucrative and pay very well, but doing that kind of requires turning it into a full-time career. Um, as a trainer, though, 300 to 600 pound mark is perfectly achievable. Um, obviously, you have to work hard, but once you're established, it's a nice addition and gives some fun money. As an aside to that, if you want to be a copywriter, that pays really, really, really well. So we'll touch on getting into that slightly in this webinar. Now, the first thing I was going to chat about was content generation ideas. Brilliant one for this is news stories. So every day, this is mainly for content for the HLHL page. I do a quick Google search for diet or exercise under the news section. And that usually brings up some either some interesting stories like studies and research and whatever, or it brings up some stuff that's absolute bullshit. And you can write kind of a rebuttal piece to it that people tend to like. Uh, it's an easy way to come up with content without having to actually think of stuff yourself. Another big one that I use is making notes of client questions. So I keep a Google Docs and any question I get sent via a Facebook message, a Facebook post, an email, or even asked in person, I keep them in that document. And what you can do is you either look for trends and write about those trends in an article or an email, or you answer a specific question. So you take the question that the person sent, you answer them, you send them back an answer, and then you turn that into a blog or an email. If you don't have people asking you questions, just Every few, or a few every day anyway, you can ask clients yourself. And another big thing I wanted to say about was a lot of people write to impress fellow fitness professionals, which is cool. There's a market for it. You know, if you're an online coach, then some of your clients may be fellow fitness professionals and they might be really impressed and want to sign up with you because of your knowledge on muscle protein synthesis or de novo lipogenesis or, you know, certain strategies for peak weeks and stuff but on the whole most of our market is going to be like joe and jane average so you want to write what they want to know really so i remember when i was starting out doing some blogs my web guys at the time actually said to me they'd ask their friends what they wanted to know and all their friends wanted to know about building big biceps now to me that was a topic that had been done time and time again there was no need to rehash it i wanted to write about fancy stuff like carb timing, but in actual fact, you know, people wanted to know the basic stuff. So if you can tap into that and find your ideal avatar and your target market and either think about what they want to know or ask them directly, then that is huge for generating content and you can just do that and it suits your audience perfectly. Other good things to do are look at trending topics, whether that's on social media, on news sites, on TV, whatever. Um, don't you have to be fitness related? That's something we'll talk about a bit later as well. And a big one I think most people fail to realize is that you're never going to come up with new stuff unless you're just ridiculously clever and study the research or conduct research yourself. So what I do is look at what's already been written and see how you can reframe it to suit your audience. So it's almost like swiping a blog idea or a concept that you see doing well and then tweaking it to see, you know, say it's an article on you know, fat loss for middle-aged women and your audience is 
so 20 to 30 year old women, you can take that, use the same structure, same outline, how the intros frames, how they conclude it, what calls to action they use, what um, topic structure they use, what bullet points, and change the information, change the language to suit who you're trying to target. This is all quite basic stuff, but I think it really, really, really matters because you can kind of get better at spelling and punctuation and grammar just by practicing, but without knowing what to write about, you're always going to struggle and people aren't really going to be interested in what you say. And alongside that, you're going to struggle even more if you want to get work as a writer because your writing is just going to be boring and tedious and monotonous and people aren't going to want to read it. So be interesting and engaging. That is the main thing. As a bonus tip, I threw this one in last minute, but use a thesaurus. There's absolutely no need to ever say something is good or bad or nice or happy. Um, it's just kind of lazy and using a thesaurus is so easy, but makes your writing just incredibly more powerful. Spell check, obvious, but it's often forgotten. Ask someone to proofread it, see if it makes sense, see if they enjoy it and see if they've got any questions at the end of it. Read your own work out loud, not just in your head, because often you'll discover errors in um, grammar, you'll see typos, you'll see you know, things that shouldn't be there, um, or hear them rather. And use paragraphs, because people tend to not be able to read for very long, and adding in a gap uh, by way of a paragraph makes people skip forward to the next bit. If you've got an important point, always put it at the start of a paragraph, and if in doubt, add a gap. People kind of take the piss out of me, because I have just a stupid number of paragraphs and articles, but people tend to read them, so it makes sense. Now we'll move on to actually making an income from writing. One of the best ways, or the best ways to do this that I've found and I'll go through here are ghostwriting, they are paid contributions, sponsorship, and then using writing to increase your coaching or training revenue, uh, selling products or copy, and becoming a copywriter. How are we doing on this so far? Any questions from anyone? No, it looks like we're all good so far, so I'll crack on. First thing is ghostwriting. Now, there are loads and loads of high profile fit pros out there who need content written, but just don't have the time. They're aware of the importance of having a blog and articles and an email list perhaps as well but they're either not sure how to write or they don't want to. And this is something you can do for them. So I've done this for a few people, um, a couple of quite big names actually, and you know it sounds all kind of shady and guru-ish. I can't say who they are because obviously it's ghostwriting, it's under their name. Um, but you know the guys I write for are really, really cool. Some of them approach me, some of them I've gone to and offered this service for. And it's a good way to kind of make connections and some money and improve your writing, really. Obviously, there are certain ways to go about this, and I want to touch on those now. I would say the best thing to do is find someone in the industry who you admire or follow, because you want to have similar ideas and principles and values as them, and create two to three brilliant blog posts for them. So you write these specifically for them. You don't kind of do three and send them out to anyone you can think of, because that's lazy and you're unlikely to get any work from it. Um, and you say to the person you send them to that they're welcome to use them for their own site or social media under their own name. They don't have to credit you for it. So send them across and see what happens. At best, they hire you to do it for them, and at worst, they don't use them, so you can just tweet them and put them on your own site. I'd always say <clears throat> approach people who have a blog, but you know, just generally post sporadic content or don't really bother with it, but they've got a big following. Um, leading on to that, someone who's got a big social media presence but little on their site. So you offer to write them 5% content pieces to get going and see what they think. Um, people on Instagram might be good, people with good Facebook followings, um, people that you know are in demand for coaching, you know, offer to get them set up with some form of written content. It can be quite a slow burn method um, and it does, you're going to get some rejection from it. But there are people out there who will pay to do this for them, it's just a case of finding them. So this was the bit, if we have him, um, looks like we have him, Dan Meredith is going to talk a bit about this, so let me see if I can bring him in and see if the technology works for us. Right, should be being added now. Uh, 
doesn't seem to have worked unless so bear me two seconds I'll just see if we can find this Jesus fucking Christ Samuels <laughs> you are literally the worst webinar producer ever I have Thanks, mate. Right. What the fuck am I supposed to say? What What could you add to the last bit about approaching people and building a network? And Honestly, do you know what? I'm going to say this. Like, Mike, okay, just to give you a little bit of an idea. Mike weighs as much as my leg, but yet he is one of the nicest and most genuine people I've ever fucking met in my life. Mike approached me weighing, I don't know, what do you weigh? What do you fucking weigh? You uh, about break. 74 kilos at the moment. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. So Mike approached me as a client for copywriting. Me and Mike then subsequently made about 600 grand a year, US dollars, off the back of that. What I'm trying to say is if you are limited in your beliefs, if you think you can't make it, if you think you can't do it, that's what you're going to do. So if you are in a niche, if you're in a service industry, it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you think you can add value to someone in your niche, pitch the fuck to them. Is that fair to say, Mike? That is 100% fair to say. We did a deal yesterday. Five grand. Not being vulgar, it's just the way it is. Why? Because we have skills and we can do it. We have the ability to pitch ourselves into people because we say, do you know what? Me and Mike went to a, do you mind if I share the supplement story? No, no, go for it. So, okay, here's the deal. Me and Mike went to uh, Chicago to a supplement mastermind, okay? We're copywriters. I have a gym. Mike is an excellent fit pro. We went there. There was 32 people in that room. We're the only two copywriters. We made $45,000 in three days. So what I'm trying to say is if you have the ability to write, if you can pitch, if you can present your skills to people, you can make money. Put it this way. Okay, I'm going to look at the questions. Okay, I'm, I will hang up just because I'm a spiteful prick. In the question box, message who you love. Who do you look up to? Who are your idols? Who do you think is fucking fantastic in nutrition, fitness, business, marketing? Let's listen to some. Mike, are you there? Yes. You need to do this because I can't say it. That's cool. I should wait for people to come in. Got nothing so far. Rude. <laughs> Rude people. Oh, there we go. Lane Norton. Lane Norton. Everyone loves Lane Norton. He's like a hot Canadian with big biceps. Brad S. Eric yeah. Allen. Phil Lurney. Alan Aragon. Okay. So, would anyone listening like to connect with those people? Say yes in the fucking chat box. <laughs> I'm a spiteful prick. I'll just hang up for fun. <clears throat> Still saying names. Honestly, Mike. What, why are you on Google? Seriously, I told you how to do GoToWebinar. <laughs> Fuck's sake. So what I'm saying is, these people that we've just spoken about are extremely fucking busy. If you love them and you love what they do and you think you could do, kind of, you could help them out with their world, as in you love the shit they put out there, but you could do your own version of it, this is what we do. Me and Mike have written for some of the biggest fucking names in the world. Understand that in the fucking world, we take the pressure off very skilled, very talented people. What do we do? We take their knowledge, their skills, and their genius, and we write it in a way that, you know, A, gets their presence across, and B, gives them free time. Is there anyone on this fucking call who would not want that? I'm going to answer for them and say no. No. I need them to answer for themselves, Mike. 
Okay, I'm out. Sorry. I'll let them. No, seriously, I have admin rights. I will end this webinar at a principle. I need 10. What did I just say? I need 10 of the things I've just said. No, one, two, three, four, five. I think we're up to six. No, it's five, six. No, it's six. Seven, eight. All right, pricks. Yeah, cool. I think we've got oh, it. Oh, look at you and your fucking popular friends. But what I'm trying to say is people want freedom. They want someone who can do shit for them. If you believe in something that your mentor, idol, whatever believes in, pitch it to them. Say, hey, I love what you do. Can I take this off your hands? Do you know what? Mike came to me. And you basically took shit off my hands. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say. And we both made a fuck ton of money. That's also fair to say. All right. I am going to go right now because of reasons that you know. But what I'm going to say is, if any of you listening on this webinar come on board, what Mike is going to talk about later, you're going to have access to my world. That cool, Mike? That is fantastic, mate. Thank you. Awesome. If you do not, that is also cool. But I'm basically offering you a shortcut. Me and Mike have made several million for our clients, and we've not exactly done badly ourselves. If you want to get in on the fucking M&D fucking train, comment below. If you don't, good luck. I, I'm staying with Mike at the moment, so I'm being a trolling prick. I'm literally upstairs just doing this for lols. So, Mike, go have fun. Show your genius. You're a fucking legend. Thank you, mate. Appreciate it. Take care, my friend. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Awesome. Well, yeah, that was Dan Meredith for you. So, Dan is 100% right in the fact that Anyone who you look up to is just the person. You know, like you said, all of us want more free time, want to make more money. And if you can write for someone, that is absolutely going to do that without a doubt. So obviously Dan talks about it in maybe slightly more open senses than I do, but the guys we work with, we did make them a lot of money purely by writing and got repaid very well ourselves by it. So that's just what ghostwriting can do. And like Dan said, stay on board um get through to the end and i'll have something that i think is going to interest you so be patient we've got a load of good stuff before that but yeah that's the plan so like we said ghost writing is very cool dan told you a load about it how to approach people it is easy and it's a fantastic way to make money for them and to make money for you as well second one we have is paid contributions now, this one can also be pretty lucrative, depending on where you contribute to. So sites that pay you for your articles and blogs and whatever will have an editorial process. So your pieces might not always make the grade, but once you do get a piece accepted, it becomes a lot, lot easier. You get to know the editors, you get to know other writers, you know, the head editor, whatever, and then you can pitch directly to them. So some sites we'll talk through in a minute and magazines can be tricky to get into, but if you can write well, it's certainly achievable. So like I said, if you can, build a rapport with the editor. Um, and like you did with ghostwriting, submit a few pieces written specifically for whatever magazine or site that you're pitching to. So sites that can pay, um, you've got bodybuilding.com, you've got the PTDC, you have T Nation, uh, Bro Bible, the Ask, Ask Men site. Places like Reach Self, Cosmopolitan, Hive Health Media, and Food Sense were just some of the kind of ones that paid pretty well for articles that I, I picked out. You can also look at Blogging Pro and Elance. A lot of the time, they're looking for writers to write for health and fitness sites you might not have heard of, but again, the pay can be pretty good. Process is simple for that. Like I said, just submit an article, look around for it, do a Google search once a week of fitness writer wanted, and I can guarantee there'll be some easy money in there. <clears throat> third one probably the i wouldn't say least valuable because it's still good but compensated contributions this could be supplement websites or training equipment and clothing websites 
basically they might not pay you, but they will give you things to write for them. So certain supplement companies give you like a hundred pounds worth or hundred fifty dollars worth of credit with them a month to write articles for their site. I did this for a site for a while. Um, did it for the Protein Works. Hundred percent honesty, I don't know if they still work like this, but around about a year or so ago, for four relatively short articles a month, you were given a hundred pounds supplement credit. So four short articles used to take about an hour and a half and that paid for supplements so I could get some from my clients and all of that. Don't do it anymore, but it's worth asking and seeing where it would. If they don't have it advertised on their website, just send an email ask anyway. Number four is gonna be a big one for a lot of you and that's talking about increasing your coaching or training revenue. So personally, I can attribute writing as the number one thing I did to get fully booked with online clients. And having a regularly updated blog that was useful, informative, also played a huge role in when I built an offline business too. A regular blog shows that you know your stuff and keeps people coming back to your site. And while it might not be earning directly from writing, it's still a means of boosting income. Main advice on this would be to get a blog, um, just a WordPress one or have one set up on your site. Write at least three articles per week and use all the tips we covered right at the start on how to get interesting, engaging content. And then share these blogs around, so on your personal and business Facebook pages, email lists, um, put them in forums. As long as you're not spamming people and the content is actionable and relates to the group or the, the medium that you're putting it in, then you're going to do fine from it. I would also add with this that learning how to write in a way that isn't selling, but it's getting people to make an action, take action on something, um, is huge. I think, yeah, I've got it in the next section, actually. So what you need for a blog is a clickable title. Now, we're not talking clickbait, but you're gonna be looking at something like, well, no one's gonna open up an article that is, I don't know, the best way to lose fat, because it's so generic, it's been done before, but if you can have something a bit more interesting and engaging, you can use maybe a celebrity name in there, you can use some sort of news story, you can use some interesting words as well, you know, un the best unusual way to use fat, the three best ways to lose fat you never thought of. A um, blog I had that did really, really well was what Bruce Springsteen could teach you about fat loss. So anything that's a bit weird to get people in, you need a strong introduction to get people to keep reading once they've clicked on it. Actionable information, so the person feels like they're getting value from the blog. You need some pictures because, again, people have short attention spans. Likewise, for headings, bold type and plenty of paragraphs. And you have to have a call to action. So that call to action could be something like, you know, click here to get on my email list. It could be click here to apply for coaching. It could be read this blog. It could be send me an email. Anything that gets people doing stuff on your blogs. Quick one on guest blogging as well. So guest blogging is writing under your name but for someone else's site. Again, it doesn't pay directly, but it's a really good way to gain followers. For this, I'd pitch to trainers that you respect, admire, and have similar values to, like you did for the ghost writing. Uh, but this time you're doing it to get exposure rather than to get paid. And provided you can get some type of backlink in there to your own website or email list or product or whatever, then you're doing fine on that. Let's just see if we've got any questions at all coming through. Um, nothing particular related to this, um, only to someone saying, am I going to share this presentation afterwards? Yeah, it will all be shared, so that's fine on that. Cool. Um, and also earlier on, James asked, what's the copywriter? Going to talk about that in a bit, actually, James, and there's a lot more on it at the end, so you should be fine on that. Kind of blitz through the last couple of sections because I know people are probably more interested in products and how to create products and sell those. The one thing with this, it's actually a hell of a lot quicker and easier than a lot of people think. So there's no reason not to have a product to sell. And you might only have a small list or a small following now, but actually this is the perfect time to try stuff out rather than you, know, you take time building up a huge list release a product you think is going to be amazing and it just goes down like a pile of crap. So the best thing to do is just pull your finger out and do something now. It's a big one that I run into. A lot of fitness professionals say, 
you know, I, I don't know what to write. I don't have the time to write an ebook. I've not got a big enough following yet. Just do it. I've got some social proof in a minute of how well mine did when I had a, a relatively small list a couple of years ago, not much of a following. And it was just, well, crazy at the time. I never expected it to do so well. But because there was value and content and because the sales copy and the emails and all the marketing stuff were written well, it did incredibly, in all honesty. Um, not talking mega bucks, so I'll say about it in a minute, but blew my mind compared to how I thought it would do. So good ideas for a product. Ebooks, obviously, if you're a good writer. Longer or multiple ebooks can sell for more if you call them home study courses. You could go for a membership site or like an inner circle email list, which is a lot of the what the top copywriters do, or some sort of course as well. So courses are really useful. They tend to get delivered on like a daily or a weekly basis, let people learn something in their own time and digest the content at their own speed. Again, there's a lot more value in them because people can learn from them. Uh, again, video courses work fine, but you'll still need to write to sell them. So to get started, you create a free product known as a lead magnet. So that's a small ebook, maybe like a cheat sheet, an infographic, or even a private video. What people then have to do is give you their email address to in order to get this. So what you do is create something called a squeeze page. It's very easy with a site like Lead Pages to do this. Um, you get some really good compelling copy on there to get people to want to download it. They give you their email address to get access to it. And then what happens is they get added to your email list. I'd recommend Aweber or MailChimp to set up and hold email addresses for this. Uh, they're both free up until a certain number of subscribers. From here, you've got people on your email list. What you want to do is write and create an autoresponder sequence. Now, if you've ever done this, so I'm sure you have, you've gone on something seen as a free ebook or an offer or anything like that, put in your email address, you get an email through straight away, and probably over the next few days, you get one email a day from the company or the person. This is an autoresponder. So a really good tactic for this, I think I actually stole this from John Goodman, but it works amazingly well, especially for fitness products. So email one delivers the freebie and encourages some sort of engagement. So that could be you ask them to reply to you, you get ask them to add email addresses, uh, sorry, add your email address to their contacts and get them to whitelist your emails as well. That means that your emails will go to their primary inbox, not to spam, not to the promotions folder or anything like that. Email number two, you make some sort of embarrassing confession or admittance. So it sounds a bit weird, but a fitness-based one that I use is, you know, my paleo made me fat story, showing about how I binge ate, I screwed up on a diet, I got fat, and what that does is it makes you kind of more human to an audience, and a lot of the people who download it are going to be, you know, probably normal people who for them fitness seems quite big and scary. So if you can make it seem more accessible and show that you fucked up at it as well, that's a great way to, to build some rapport. Again, I'll get them to like give a reply to it if you can. Email three gives them a ton of value. So for instance, in the in my example, I said about how paleo made me fat in email two. Email three gave them lots of info on flexible dieting and how they could use it in their own life. Email four is a case study, so that's your clients, it's testimonials, it's videos, it's pictures, just showing how much value you can give them. Email five tells them why their current approach isn't working. So you tell them why clean eating isn't working, why paleo isn't working, why going to the gym every day isn't working, anything like that. Email six tells them about a better way, so you touch more on your approach. Again, for my instance, that would be flexible dieting. Email seven introduces your product with some kind of time sensitive special offer or bonus. So this is where I'd send them an ebook perhaps and say, you know, get it in 24 hours before the price rises to whatever. <clears throat> Email eight can be done later that day and warns them of the end of the deal, gets them to kind of click to buy, increases urgency, you know, it's a last minute thing, they've got to invest if they want it now. And then after this, they drop into your regular email broadcast list where you email Maybe daily, maybe a few times a week, maybe once a week, just as long as you have regular contact and keep the emails just absolutely on point. So that is a really, really brief overview because, again, that whole thing could be like a few different webinars in one. 
you know, if you want something like this, if you want a bigger webinar all on this, I'll break it down into much more detailed steps, then please let me know because I'm happy to do that. It's something that I've found has been brilliant for passive income. It meant that, you know, going away on holiday, don't need to worry because some money's coming in. A product launch can bring in quite a lot of money if you do it right. So more than happy to do that if there's a demand for it. Just pop me a message or put anything in the chat box for that. <clears throat> Next one was just kind of talking about regular content emails. So you just want to deliver value, occasionally put you know a product in there or an affiliate promo or announce your you've got client spots open and just focus on engagement. You know, having people think of you as an authority and feel like they can relate to you is far more important than just trying to sell them stuff all the time. All right, let's have a look how we're doing for questions, if there are any. Um, oh, Tristan asked about books. Um, I shall, I've actually got some recommended resources coming up a bit later, Tristan. That's in a couple of slides time, so I'll go through that there. Um, and yeah, people were saying yes, please, please the product launch webinar, so it's fine. I'm happy to do that at some point. So let's go back to the presentation. Just a bit more about email already. Email is an amazing way to increase revenue. I would say it's better than Facebook. It's better than paying for ads. It's just, it's, I, well, I can't even really put it into words how good it is in terms of engagement. So trust is far higher than on social media. Looking around at some studies for this, it seems like return of investment on email is thought to be between about 3,500 and 4,000%. Uh, once you've got your lead magnet, your autoresponder and your product in place, you can grow it organically or you can pay for traffic. You know That's how the big guys do it. They have a funnel that just turns over automatically. They do no work for it. They just gradually pay for more traffic. When they've got some cash in from the product, they increase their traffic spend and it just grows and grows and grows. Main thing with this, just go ahead and do it. So the process really doesn't take too long. And I just want to use my first ebook as a case study. The lead magnet, the free download, took two hours to do. So I actually did it sitting in Brussels Airport, waiting for a flight home, did the whole thing before my flight. So that was a free book, like just a 10-page sort of thing that people could download. Then the autoresponder sequence took about eight hours. Creating the ebook took about 12 hours. So what you're looking at, 22 hours of total work. And day one of sales, my list was only about 1,500 at the time. Um, made just over a thousand pounds in day one, just from that creating the product. I will add the cost of having the ebook designed was about three hundred pounds, so still seven hundred pound profit. And since then, which was a year and a bit ago, um, about eighteen months, uh, over four thousand copies sold with just a small ad spend on Facebook. I generally budget about hundred pounds a month, so all that from like twenty two hours of work. And again, you know, paid for some traffic, grew it organically but it was purely the way it was written and how the copy was put together for the emails and how the autoresponder runs. So in reality, very simple and incredibly lucrative and I have no idea why no one would not do it. Believe we're onto the final section now, which is copywriting. Um, so even if this isn't something that you think straight away you're interested in, I would say hold on because actually if you want to increase sales of your online coaching, then this is massive so everyone could do with learning some basic copywriting it really could be like a whole webinar or a whole series of webinars in itself sorry I sound just like West Country then um, but for the purpose of today I just wanted to talk about writing your own copy and a basic get started guide so copywriting is essentially a way of selling something but you're not ramming a pitch down someone's throat you're maybe telling a story, you're giving them free information and advice. And I put it like this, I got this off a, an exceptional copywriter, um, met him a few times, local guy to me, he's a brilliant guy called John Street. He says, think of yourself as an internet motivator, not an internet marketer. A lot of people, especially fitness professionals, are a bit scared of selling something. They think, you know, selling is dirty, marketing's a bad word or whatever. And if you think of that, then yeah, it's not very nice. But the way you want to think of it is that you've got the skills with what you know about health and fitness and weight loss to potentially change someone's life, potentially even save someone's life if they're in a really dark place from how unfit and out of shape they are. 
So what you're doing, you've got a duty really to get them to, to kind of come on board with your ideas and to trust you enough to let you change their life. And you want to motivate them to take action to that. So if that's having coaching, if that's buying an ebook from you that will do this for them, then it's kind of your job to do it. So think of yourself as someone who's trying to bring about an action from someone else, not someone who's just trying to sell and make money. In terms of writing like a, a sales page or something, um, I think a good template is one that a guy, a uh, very famous copywriter called Frank Kern uses. Again, this can be a topic for another webinar if it's wanted. So you point out who your message is for, you specifically target your niche, you identify their problem, you talk about why what they're currently doing to solve their problem doesn't work, you then tell them how you discovered what does work, and then you tell them how you can get it. Again, don't want to go into too much detail on that now, and if you want more, then kind of keep listening, and I'll go into it in a bit in just a second. The best place to practice your copy is either in a blog, in emails, but instead of trying to sell a product or get someone to click on a link to buy, you're asking for an action, such as clicking on a link to another article or to join a group, or even just send you an email. So if you set things up in that way and then say to learn more about this, send me an email, even if all you want to do is then you know, converse them and give them some free tips to help, it's a great way to try and to bring about a call to action from someone. I would also say, again, whether or not you want to, want to learn copywriting for the sake of copywriting, you can and should also study sales letters, um, things like infomercials and adverts, and then write them out yourself. Good thing to do is keep a swipe file of emails that catch your attention. Save adverts and sales pages you like and that make you want to buy a product or service. So if you're an online coach and you're on someone else's site and you think, oh, wow, I'd love to have coaching with them, see what it is about that page that makes you want to buy and then tweak it and use it for yourself. You can also look through your promotions folder in your inbox each day and take note of what you open and why and what stands out to you. And again, just take what's working and use it on your own stuff. In terms of resources, which Tristan asked about earlier, I'd say books like Breakthrough Advertising um, by Eugene Swartz, a uh, book called Web Copy That Sells is really good, The Ultimate Sales Letter by Dan Kennedy and The Bore on Letters by Gary Helbert are all really good. Um, all available on Amazon, I believe. Breakthrough advertising, I'm not so, so sure. That went out of print a while ago, and it, for a while it was very, very rare and extremely expensive to buy. If you can get a PDF copy, then go for it. Other resources, I'd say get on as many email lists as you can and read what comes through. So Ben Settle is very good, as is Andre Chaperone. Uh, Dan Meredith, I I think he, yeah, he got himself across all right earlier. He's, his emails are excellent. Obviously, I'm biased, but he's very, very good. Um, Paul Moore does it for Fit Pros. Doberman Dan did a lot of stuff with bodybuilding.com back in the day, so he's good to follow. The Digital Marketer website, which is Ryan Dice. Uh, John McCulloch, John McIntyre, Perry Marshall. There's the Copy Hour website, Darren Hanser, and Ryan Levesque. I've also put uh, John McIntyre's podcast in there as well if you prefer to listen to stuff rather than read. In terms of fitness-based copywriting resources, while they don't advertise themselves as copywriters, they are all very, very good at wording emails. So John Goodman of the PTDC, Nate Green is brilliant, John Romillo is great too, a friend of mine, Jason Maxwell, Chris McCombs, and Nick Cheadle. All of those guys are well worth following for their emails for the fact they do very, very well for themselves, but you never feel like you're being sold to. Let me just see if we've got any questions from this at all. Uh, Emma asks, can you track if your emails are being opened or not? Yep, absolutely. Uh, Aweber and MailChimp, I mentioned earlier, both do that, and they're both free up until a certain point. Um, I think that was it on questions so far. Just open it back up for you. So what to do now? We're pretty much at the end. Um, again, a few more bits to go through before we finish for good. But I would say the best thing to do is just get started. So most people are going to procrastinate or they're just going to go back to writing Facebook posts, which is a complete waste of time. It's important to have a social media presence, but it's not really going to get you anywhere in the long run. 
at least nowhere near as far as writing can or putting together an email list and having products. Some people might put together a blog or start an email list or even send one or two emails to like a site editor or look at ghostwriting, but not many people will actually do something that gets you towards that 300, 600 pound goal. So I'd actually love it if you used what you've got here and went away and did it for yourself. You're always gonna have doubts and objections about you know what if it doesn't work, what if I screw up, what if I don't get a response, and that's 100% normal, but you're never gonna get anywhere unless you get started. So what I want you to do is, within 48 hours, contact one person seriously about guest blogging, write an article specifically for a site, and get writing an autoresponder. Then you've got your free product and a paid product after that. <clears throat> but if nothing comes of it, it really doesn't matter. This will all work if you do it consistently. You know, I'm. When I got into writing, I was absolutely nothing special, and I was just kind of quite ferocious with it and practiced a lot, and now, like I said, it's main source of income, and it's really good fun. And like Dan said, you know, I don't talk about money as much as he does, but it's very, very, very lucrative. So even if you just do it on the side, even if you just do it to promote your own business, it's well worth doing. So I wanted to finish off well, first of all, basically, I really, 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 really hope you've enjoyed the webinar. So, like I said, massively appreciate you giving up your Wednesday evening or Wednesday afternoon, wherever it is, or whatever time it is if you're watching this on a replay. So, my aim with this was to make something that actually gave quick and noticeable results. So, if you implement what's in here, you'll no doubt make that 300 to 600 pound a month. Probably even in the first month, if I'm being 100% genuine, that's not blowing smoke, that's not overstating it, it is doable. But despite this, I kind of realized that some people want more. And I don't know if it's just a fitness industry thing, but a lot of us really aren't too great at selling, and we kind of either downplay just how much we can help people, which leaves potential clients feeling like we aren't worth their money, or we sound egotistical and big-headed by trying too hard to sell. And I found this firsthand when I started to learn how to write copy. So the thing was, once I started telling stories in emails and in blogs, once I started talking about benefits and value, and looking at things like sales pages, like scripts, like even Facebook posts or blog posts and emails, as a way to educate prospects and you know, motivate them to invest in something, actually business became a whole lot easier. Um, started making more money without really trying to make more money, it just, business got better. So everybody pretty much knows what copywriting is, or we certainly do by now, and kind of has a basic understanding of how to write it, but it's certainly not until you really study it that you see how powerful it can be. So I go on about this a fair deal, but that's because it is a seriously undervalued skill. You know, We had Dan on earlier, and he told you exactly how amazingly profitable it can be. Um, and again, neither of us are anything special. We just kind of went ahead and did it, pitched ourselves, practiced a lot, and did really well from it. And as a personal trainer or coach, you, know, you obviously need to be great at your job and you will pick up some business through referrals and through word of mouth, but picking up cold clients who just come to your website once is really difficult. So that's where copy comes in. And obviously you've got some basic starting points in the re re webinar even, but it's really like a severely underrated skill set, but surprisingly easy to learn. So what I wanted to do was put together a course for anyone on this webinar who wants to learn more about copywriting, specifically in the fitness industry. So if you find that you're struggling to get people to buy into you, or you find it hard to put into words how you can help potential clients, then it's something that I think you should check out. Personally, I don't know if like fellow online coaches out there have noticed this as well, but making yourself stand out in the online game is getting harder and harder. Yeah, it's more competition, really. Three or four years ago, you could pick up clients pretty easily, but now every guy and girl with a faint outline of abs is picking up online clients. Now, learning to write copy has been integral to me getting fully booked and actually kind of staying fully booked. So I never really advertise for client spots, haven't done for the best part of a year, but still have sort of 25, 35 online clients on the book at any one time, and that's pretty much my limit. I turn down anything else that comes in. So I'm definitely not the like the leanest or the biggest or the strongest or sexiest guy in the world, but being able to write has made you know, made me able to fill coaching spots pretty easily. 
Um, obviously, as we said, copywriting itself can be amazingly lucrative. So even as a rookie copywriter, back when I was writing with Dan, or before that even, I was, you know, we'd get a couple of hundred dollars for a blog, a um, thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for a sales page, and now it's kind of you know, that sort of we've gone up three, four, five times even. Dan told you how much we made off that that gig in Chicago and what we did the other day. You know, quick phone call, probably five, six hours of work, and it's five thousand dollars. So, yeah, if you can get it, it's great. So I realized there's kind of a massive gap out there in copywriting for the fitness industry. So I went together and put put this course together. I've based around everything that I've learned from working people like Dan, as well as other copywriters that I've mentioned with, mentioned Darren Hanser and John McIntyre, Dave and Dan and people before, um, <clears throat> just to kind of put it in simple terms really, and to cut out all the stuff that doesn't matter versus stuff that you need to know. So what I've done is set up the course that runs for 30 days. Every day you get a task that will take no longer than an hour, and more often than not, it's more like 20 minutes, and that's to make you a better copywriter, without putting any extra stresses on your time. You're pretty much you know, being given a foot up the arse to get on, do some writing, make yourself a better writer, to make more sales, make more money. So I'll tell you a bit more in a minute, but I'm gonna do a damn here and be 100% honest, it's not a cheap course, but the return on the investment can potentially be phenomenal. And that is me being genuine. You heard it from Dan earlier, and I'll say it again now. So I'm probably similar to a lot of you here, and I don't like talking openly about money, and how much things will cost. But I just wanted to give some sort of social proof to show that this will give some amazing return. So even if you used it and signed up one extra online client per month from being a better writer and learning how to sell your services, then you get 100 to 150 pounds extra per month. If your average client lifespan is say six months, then you're talking 600 to 900 pounds just from signing up one client. I confidently say that if you can learn and apply what's in the course, you could easily get a couple of extra clients every month. Um, so a guy I'm helping out doing this at the moment, been going four or five weeks, he's just using these strategies and he's got three new clients already. That aside, if you want to actually go into copywriting as a profession, then you know the money gets to like scary level, as Dan said. So I would also say if you're worried about trying to market yourself as a copywriter just from doing a course, then remember the course is gonna teach you how to write in an engaging, persuasive way that makes people want to buy in. So you won't even have trouble writing the copy for other people, you'll be able to sell your own services too. So 100% honesty on the cost, it is £497, which is about $650. And I know a lot of people will be thinking, oh, well, that is a lot of money. Um, and that's true, but there's a reason for the price. So like I said, if you pick up just one extra client from it, and I'm 100% sure that you will, then you've made your money back. And copywriting is all about connecting with people, so you've got a skill for life. It's not like learning Facebook ads or SEO, which can change in six months' time and become redundant. Copywriting will never go out of fashion. An extra client a month over the course of the next six months would equal a revenue increase of £2,100 based on a £100 per month client charge. In dollars, that's 2800 And as for being a copywriter, you can double your money with just one sales page commission. So I know that a lot of people you know, we get sick of it, they do their serious inquiries only thing and whatever, but I do generally mean this, because I don't want anyone who invests in this not taking action. So you know, I only do this if you are serious about making writing in something you want to earn money from and increasing your business. Now personally, I know how much it sucks being a fully booked trainer, working seven days a week and burning the candle at both ends, feeling like holidays and days off mean no money. And even if you're on like good wage, it can get tiring. You always feel like you're fighting a losing battle in the online coaching game as well, as every other trainer seems to be so much more appealing than you. I mean, we can't all have year-round abs and 20,000 Instagram followers, but we can all have an audience who love us, follow what we do constantly and can't wait to buy into what we have to offer. And that can all be done by learning how to write copy. That's pretty much all I've got to say on this, but I want to add that I was more or less lucky to fall into copywriting, but it did completely change my life and brought me to places that I didn't think were possible, just being a trainer. Um, but that was it, it was regular trainer, started writing, got some coaching, learned how to do it, and then the work offers came flooding in. Um, still do training because I love it, but at the same time, writing is, fantastic in its own right. So 
it's not about tricking people into buying something, and it's more about motivating people to take action and to buy into you. So whether you want to just fill up more online coaching spots, improve your writing to earn more passive income, or actually become a copywriter, then I think you should go over and take a look. So I'll post that link for the page in just a moment, but all I wanted to say to finish was a massive, massive thank you for coming on this. And yeah, I'll post that link, head over and check it out. And thanks guys, shall talk to you soon.